Got, he does have Flame Kin sell it rather than like the Gristle Brand or Iona some people might run. He has two Dread Returns and he's got three Breakthroughs and beyond that it's just four of all the spells you would expect to see in Dredge and uh, all the Dredgers with three Golgari Thug. Um, a lot of people, and I have to say that I am amongst them, were a little scared when we saw Faithless Looting printing with regards <laughs> to what it might do to Dredge. His opponent here, uh, Derek, I am going to say Rafizen, Rafizen. He is uh, is playing Rug Delver, basically the inheritor to the old school Canadian threshold lists that we saw. What maybe about eight years ago at this point. Yep. Uh, looks like Derek's on the play with that Delver, and Daniel starting off with City of Brath, Brass, and Faithless Looting. Doesn't have the nuts with a uh, potential turn one LED, but he's putting Derek to the test right now. Derek has a Daze or a Force of Will. He's going to be pretty tempted to play it, and yeah, he's forcing. Yeah. Now, the thing about a card like Faithless Looting or Careful Study, once that first Dredge card is in the graveyard, Dredge takes on a new mechanic entirely. Uh, basically, a new tenor, I should say, entirely. And that mechanic, the Dredge mechanic, just takes over, and you stop playing what looks like magic. Yep. Uh, Derek went ahead and revealed a lightning bolt to his Delver. A nice card to find. It can sometimes let him turn off a bridge, uh, but more importantly, it's also going to let it sh let him shorten his clock on Daniel by uh, probably about a turn. And he's just getting right to the races with turn one Delver, flip, turn two Tarmogoyf. Uh, the Tarmogoyf, thanks to an instant, a land, and a sorcery, is already a 3-4. Uh, these players are each with one loss at the moment also. The only two undefeated players left in the tournament are Rob Vaca and Lauren Nolan on Enter the Infinite and Esper Stoneblade, respectively. You might, rem drawing. you might remember we saw Rob Vaca earlier today play in the Team Hot Sauce Championship <laughs> where he defeated Joe Bernal. Tarmogoyf and a flipped Delver of Secrets, now in Sectile Aberration, face off against two mana. Looks like Dan. I can't tell if Daniel has another way to get a dredger in the bin or not. He needs one. Uh, he has Cabal Therapy. I imagine it's going to target himself and name Grave Troll. Yep. Golgari Grave Troll now in the graveyard. Reveals Maybe he leaves his hand revealed for now. Thug, Bridge, and Imp for the hand. Uh, he's going to need a pretty strong hit on that Golgari Grave Troll next turn. He's going to get thwacked for 7, which will put him down to 8, which means if he takes another damage from any of his lands, he's actually facing lethal without a blocker. And he has to also be aware of the potential for lightning bolts, which he knows Derek has won. And it's about to be a game of not quite magic. Here we go. Mm. Will Daniel be able to do something impressive, or will the game end? Nothing impressive there. And that's... We know his hand. That should be it. Oh, He's wait, yeah, Coliseum. Yeah, he's Coliseum. go a little deeper, but all he has is a thug. He has nothing else going. So if this thug misses, uh, that'll be it. First dredge of three. Oh. An Archimeba. That's a good one. Needs another dredger on the fourth guard. Uh, two oh. Archimebas. That does keep him alive. It keeps him alive as far as he knows. Uh, Derek actually has two lightning bolts in his hand, so... Uh, we also are, I believe our life total is off by a point. I think he's down, or is he down? No, he is on seven now. Here, right, yeah. Okay, if he has two lightning bolts and it looks like a fetch land, yep. I think that that's it then. Uh, well, actually, no, he's got a bridge from yeah. below in Gravy as well, so he's not he's not dead yet. And the second bridge from below. He's discarding the second one to a uh, Coliseum. And going to go ahead and get his dra graveyard straightened up, but not reorganize it, notably. <laughs> He has a Dread Return, two Bridge from Blows, two Cabal Therapies, I believe. Uh, it's actually a relatively reasonable play for him to sack one of those Narc moves right off the bat and name Lightning Bolt, considering he gets two zombie tokens. But Derek's going to go ahead and just kill his own Delver. Goodbye, Bridges. It's possible Derek made that play during the uh, draw step or something like that, I guess, depending on when Daniel was doing his actions. I think you're or, completely I guess, correct. No, he, uh, he did. 
He cracked a Colosseum, so I imagine he can't have done it quite that way. Yeah. Stifle, a fine card. It'll be able to stop another Narc Amiibo from entering play. In marches the Delver in a or uh, sorry, the Tarmogoyf in a second. I believe probably what happened there, since the cards that Daniel would want to cast are sorcery speed cards that we probably still had triggers on the stack or some other um, effect on the stack. Oh, perhaps he... Ah, he... I think that he actually did... Uh, we were a little unclear based on what was going on on the board. I think he did flashback that Cabal Therapy to try and name Lightning Bolt, and Derek responded by bolting his own Delver. Gotcha. Because uh, there are now two Lightning Bolts in the graveyard. Well, that wouldn't... Uh, well, I guess, yeah, that would work. That yeah. Would work. It, it will effectively negate the bridges getting any zombie tokens. Uh, so, to clear that up... In comes Tarmogoyf, dropping Daniel to three. Um... Uh, interestingly, it was because Daniel held that scolding tarn that he was not able to uh, cast both bolts in response to the Cabal Therapy. Punished a little bit for that one. Another Colosseum. Stifle the Colosseum. Ouch. Yeah, well, Daniel, not excited to see that. Now, you can see here Daniel doing what many dredge players do, We're using in... his the table for his uh, his to show his graveyard. And to clarify, this is a draw step dredge. Daniel was cracking his Colosseum during his own upkeep uh, in order to p potentially maximize his draw step. And I don't think I saw him hit a bridge there. No bridges means, there. Yeah, he's Icarid is what he got. He's in the abyss at this point. With no upside. <laughs> Next turn's dredge, we'll need to find him a uh, copy of Bridge from Below, uh, or I guess, actually I think just Bridge from Below is all we can really do here. Attacks for one with his Narc Amoeba. In comes the Tarmogoyf. The other Narc Amoeba blocks Daniel Kwiatkowski, looking for a chance to win here. He's gonna bring back Icarid, that'll give him two creatures. Uh, keep in mind, he does not have access to something like Gristlebrand, so he can't dredge his way into that, reanimate it, and hope to ride it to victory. Uh, he's on the, uh, the grind it plan. Icarid comes back, getting rid of a Putrid Imp. Daniel had a precarious two life. Derek does run Forked Bolt in his deck. Yeah, he has. And Fire Ice. Yep. Yeah. He has more burn spells than most uh, Rug Delver players. Most run four, maybe five. He's got seven. Putrid Imp is the card dredged. Icarid marches on in for three. Derek empty-handed, but Daniel is actually quite uh, quite hobbled here. Most of his Narc Amoebas are dead. Two of his bridges are gone. He has no bridges in the graveyard. Yep, and, and he's... Uh, a his, lot of dredgers are in his hand. His capability to pull off the combo finish is definitely not looking great. He could ball therapy himself there, sacrificing Icarid before the end step. <laughs> that helps him get that Golgari Grave Troll back in the yard, giving him the massive dredge that that card can provide. He's going to need to hit a good one this turn. He's losing his Narc Amoeba. Icarid's not exactly a, a blocker, <laughs> as, <laughs> right. as they, uh, they call him. Derek Raffison <laughs> off the top. Fork Bull will do it. We're on to game two and see our coverage runner there, Patricia, in the background um, next to Derek. To the sideboards. Derek has, uh, let's see, three surgical extractions amongst his many cards that he can bring in to help fight this fight. And no other particularly exciting cards. Uh, over in Daniel's sideboard, he has some of those fatties that we mentioned are absent from the main deck. He has Angel of Despair, Iona, and Elishnorn. Uh, I could see him going for one of the fatties in this matchup. And a resolved Elishnorn is pretty much impossible for a, a Rug Delver player to realistically beat in a game. He also has access to Firestorm, but not really impressed with that card against Rug Delver. It basically can only kill Delver of Secrets, and it does it at a rel relatively steep price. So I imagine he might slot in that, uh, that big guy, and that's about it. Maybe tweaking with uh, his third Icarid is in the sideboard, as is his fourth breakthrough. 
Now, one of the things that uh, the firestorm is usually for is to stop hateful creatures. And there are a ton of creatures that if they sit and play can make Dredge not have a very happy day. And uh, obviously, Derek does not have his deck list in Daniel's hands, so he doesn't know for sure. But a quick glance on our side of things, there are no creatures in Derek's deck that are particularly hostile to Dredge. And Rug Delver, generally the uh, the worst that they can mention is the Ooze, yeah. which is often going to get outside of fire uh, storm range immediately. Yeah, it's not uncommon for some Rug Delver players to play one Scavenging Ooze and some number of Green Sun Zeniths over the some burn spells and a couple Tarmogoyfs in order to diversify their threats, while at the same time actually slightly increasing the number of threats they have in the deck going long. I've definitely also seen people play the Scavenging Ooze with zero Green Sun Zenith or sure. only a single Green Sun Zenith. Um, but Derek preferring instead to go 4-4-4 four, four, four with Delver, Tarmogoyf, Nimble Mongoose, and then have those extra slots be used up by Burn. Dredge is a deck that really likes to capitalize on game one, so uh, da Daniel being down a game is you know, generally bad news. That said, uh, a lot is won and lost in sideboarding. Many players, when faced with an enemy like Dredge, might sideboard incorrectly, might oversideboard, might side out too many creatures, things like that. Uh, I think that that's not that big a risk for the Rug Tempo deck. It's got a reasonable matchup, especially when it's on the play, so Derek at least has the luxury of a likely advantage game three. One of the uh, things that the Dredge player has going for it is it can play a game that will end before Derek can sometimes have a chance to do anything. Mm -hmm. Now, Surgical Extraction being a free spell does mean that he has the ability to interact effectively on his own turn zero, but Daniel Kwiatkowski's version of Dredge, this Lion's Eye build, quite literally can kill on the first turn. Now, that's not a very uh, likely draw, but the combination of Lion's Eye Diamonds and um, the Faithless Looting can make that happen. What's significantly more likely is that it can create a crushing advantage. Yes. Very short span of space. One of the things that if you're a long-time listener to Star City Games Open Series events, you'll know that I will usually refer people to Richard Fellman's Fearless Dredge article, an article in the Star City Games archives, one of the best deck focus articles that you will uh, ever read, along with Chris Anderson's Elves Primer and some other uh, articles like that. Now, this is not Fearless Dredge. Richard Feldman's Fearless Dredge is basically about running no answers to hate cards. Uh, this is instead uh, kind of the more hyper-aggressive Lion's Eye Diamond Faithless Looting Dredge that a lot of people prefer. Derek waits for Daniel to announce a, a Keeper Emolium before checking his own hand. I see a Bolt and some blue cards. How bad can it be? <laughs> and it looks like we're off to the races. Turn one, City of Brass. Careful study. Careful study. Now remember, start. Derek stopped with Force of Will one of these cards the last time this happened. No force of will this time. Uh, Daniel's hand looks a little light on dredgers. I don't think he has any. It looks like a bridge and Narc Amoeba, a breakthrough, a bridge. Okay. Yeah, and he's going to need to find one. And now that he's pitched the uh, careful study, his only way to get it in the bin is a Cabal Therapy, which is in his hand. No surgical extraction from Derek unless he just drew, drew one. Definitely brought him in. We can see it uh, in the deck as he shuffles there. I'm not really surprised, I gotta be honest. Brought in surgical. I saw it coming. <laughs> He's gonna go ahead and get the Mongoose down. He has access to a wasteland, but in this matchup, I think it's fine to get the threat down first. Dredge really doesn't need its lands that much. Breakthrough for one, causing two points of pain. Derek says, sure. Draw four cards, discard down to one. And there is finally some dredge action in there. Yep. Looks like we got a Stinkweed Imp and I think a Thug. Not sure. And we see the classic nope. extending the graveyard across the play space because that really is his play space. Yeah. He, uh, he has binned one Stinkweed Imp as a dredger and he has access to two bridges and a Cabal Therapy in the graveyard as relevant to other cards. Plus Colosseum is now turned on. 
Coliseum. Uh, wow, Derek decides to destroy City of Brass rather than Cephalid Coliseum with Wasteland. I assume that means he has a stifle and is planning to leave it up for most of the remaining game. In for one. <laughs> the goose definitely not loose right now. Dredge. Here comes the imp. Derek destroyed the City of Brass, I think because he assumed Daniel might have kept a Faithless Looting or a uh, Putrid Imp or a Careful Study. Wow. Stifles the trigger of the Icarid. Wow. That is an aggressive one. If Daniel happens to have another land in his hand, uh, he could really punish Derek for that. Uh, Narc Amoeba is stuck in the bin, and to be fair, the only dredger that Daniel hit was one Stinkweed Imp, so maybe Derek just decided Oof. to take that risk. Breakthrough. Do you have a daze, Mr. Da Derek? No, he does not. And uh, you'll note a firestorm has appeared in yep. Daniel's graveyard. Saw. Oh, we need a dredger right here. Oh, missing a dredger here is catastrophic. We're just drawing three and pitching our hand again. And I believe he got no... Uh... He got he got a grave troll okay. in the three cards he drew. So he's now on imp and grave troll as dredgers in his graveyard. Now, you notice him making sure his graveyard is in a particular order. In Legacy, even if Derek Raffeson doesn't have a card like uh, Frexian Furnace, you are required to keep your graveyard in the proper order. Yep. <laughs> Delver of Secrets, and now at this point, Derek's just going to try and capitalize on what he's done so far to disrupt his opponent. And he's got a quick clock in place. Obviously, if the Delver flips, that's a two-turn clock, uh, unless he has access to Bolt Bolt, which he doesn't yet. Well, right now, I feel like Daniel's in a pretty good spot. That clock, I don't know that it's going to be quick enough. I mean, he's he needs to hit an Arc Amiibo pretty soon, and he didn't. Well, uh, right now, uh, Derek has a clock of two damage a turn. No, that's a Nimble Mongoose. It's definitely got Threshold, right? No, oh, it, no doesn't. it doesn't have Threshold. Nowhere wow. near. You're, you're right. My mistake. And now uh, the Insectile Aberration knows the secrets. Four cards in the graveyard. Very close to making this a very fast clock. The Bolt in hand would make it five cards in the graveyard. So close to being a six-point clock. Right now, a four-point clock. Still pretty good. With that bolt, a four-point clock is three turns. Draw. Delver's not going to do it. What was we the card that was a... revealed to the Delver? I think it was what we're about to cast, which is this Altered Brainstorm, I believe. Okay, then how did he draw, after he got that Brainstorm, another card? Oh, okay, I'm sorry, force. he flipped a Force and then shuffled. There we go. Thank you. I just wanted to clarify. So, a Force and he shuffled it away. That makes me much happier. Derek's uh, quick hands there. I agree with that shuffle. Now he's stuck debating what to do here. That puts him to five cards. He really wanted to find a fetch land. Because then fetch land bolt would uh, be enough. But he can go bolt and then daze his own bolt, paying for it. You know, I don't know that it's worth it. Um, just coming in here for four, that's fine. I don't know. We don't have any other action. I think I would rather just... If he lays guess, that... Casting the Nimble Mongoose or the Delver is basically the same. If he casts the Delver, it's the same clock but he did not cast the Delver. Um, yeah. I thought he was going to cast that Delver, and then regardless of whether that Delver flips or not, the Bolt, and then um, the presumption of the casting of that Daze. Yeah, I feel like we definitely should have played one of our cards. Our hand is Daze, Nimble Mongoose, Delver Secrets, Lightning Bolt. I don't really see a reason to not have cast at least a Delver or a Nimble Mongoose. Icarid comes out eating a Putrid Imp. And I believe that Daniel is trying to ask if he can go to a go to his main phase or to his um sorry to his uh yeah which Derek should definitely let him do if he decides to attack and then sack the Icarid to something he can bolt his aberration once again uh also achieving threshold but that's another reason why we really wanted to have that just an extra random little dork out there to yeah. kill well if we had the nimble mongoose then we would actually have untapped with six power looks like yeah we're just gonna go ahead and bolt our guy get rid of all those bridges one bridge, two bridge, three, three bridge. bridge. That is a lot of bridges. Yep. It's a lot of bridges to lose. Oh, if only he had a little Delver to kill.
dredging up a storm here. Uh, we definitely should have uh, bolted our Delver in the draw step if we weren't to that uh, spot yet in case he dredged his way into another bridge. Yeah, this is true. Cabal therapy from the Icarid. Sacrificing Dang. the Icarid, naming whatever. I can't tell what he named, but he missed. Now he knows the days, the Nimble Mongoose, and the Delver. Derek uh, playing as though he might have a miracle on top. Named Force of Will. I don't think I like naming Force of Will there. I guess it's fine, but like your opponent just looked at the top of the deck and shuffled away a Force of Will, so <laughs> it doesn't seem very likely. He might have, oh, and one of those guys is sick, Derek. Yeah. There you go, take three. The Goose is loose. Now down to seven. Nine power on the table. This is a one where it's very close here. The one mana available to pay for whatever he needs to for that daze. Uh, Derek does now have a lethal clock in play uh, without a Narcomy but a block or some zombie tokens. Z Daniel's going to be in big trouble. At this stage, he can only have so many cards in his deck that aren't named Narcomiba, though, realistically. <laughs> yeah. There are two Dread Returns in Daniel's deck, so this also means that if he's boarded in any big monsters, he's got a better chance of being able to get something like that out. One Narc Amoeba out. Did we hit a bridge as well? He uh, scooped those up a little too fast. It looks like there is no Icarid. Oh, did we... Did, were we unable to recur Icarid? That would be really awkward. I'm not certain if he was unable or uh, if he neglected to. It's possible that he boarded out his Putrid Imps after seeing Fork Bolt in addition to Lightning Bolt. That would be a pretty aggressive choice, but I haven't seen him a Putrid Imp yet. Here come uh, the monsters. Blocks a goose, takes four, goes to three. Ah, Tarmogoyf. Monsters! Ah! Yeah, Daniel had... It looks like he got another Icarid in the uh, the draw step, I think, but did not have a black creature. Wow, didn't have a black creature. I have to tell you, I haven't seen I wonder, that. that I wonder if Daniel oversideboarded. There are yeah. a lot of Firestorms showing up, and every single one of those Firestorms is not a part of his dredge engine. Yep, uh, I, I believe he has to have boarded out the Putrid Imps and maybe shaved a Golgari Thug or two as well. Oh no, there's a Putrid Imp. So he definitely didn't board out all of them. He hit one. Wow. This is very peculiar. I'm, I'm curious how he actually organized sideboard. Maybe he did some trimming. He draws. Look at that. Offers it up. Daniel Kwiatkowski taken down 2-0 by Derek Rafusen. Rafusen? I'm sorry, Derek. I don't know how to say your name. Yeah. Uh, that puts Derek in good position to potentially draw into top eight next round. Obviously nothing certain in the game of Magic the Gathering, but uh, it's got a good shot. It sounds like we're going to have another match pretty soon. 